Welcome everyone to another episode of Elbows Tight Podcast. It's your host Travis and John. John, how you doing today? I'm good, man. How you doing? I am doing fantastic. Uh, it is a sunny. I'm joking. It's I'm raining. Like, it's, it's been raining for like four days straight it here. Has, it has. My wife's been out of town. I've been a, a, a single dad running errands and everything like that. Uh, it's been it's been a crazy couple days and a couple weeks actually. Work has been crazy. Life has been crazy, uh, you know, the the typical stuff. How's everything going for you? Uh, I haven't trained in like two weeks, so that sucked. Uh, Why is that? Got some ringworm. Ooh. Can't seem to get rid of it. Uh, you. So, I mean, I guess I could train with it. I don't know. I don't know how if people do that or not. Uh, but my doctor advised I didn't because it's contagious. So yeah. they put me on some antiviral pills yesterday, which... Interestingly enough, you can't drink any alcohol when you're on these pills, which is interesting. I don't know if I've ever went two or three weeks without any at this stage in my life. I mean, you know, who doesn't like to relax with a glass of wine or something? A nice little beer or Scotch, something like that. Something. <laughs> uh, do they worry about, like, gut health with these since it's an antiviral or... Um, I it guess it's really hard on the liver. Mm. Uh, you know, I talked to my stepdad who had to take something similar a few months ago, and he said they actually... Took did his blood work before giving it to him, and then tested his blood work again later just to make sure it wasn't too hard on him. I didn't, I'm not doing any of that. Maybe it's because I'm only taking it for two weeks instead of a couple months. But uh, who knows? I have you know. have you been doing anything outside of jujitsu to to stay as sharp as a tack? I mean, just the normal stuff, right? Like you know, you research some technique online, stuff like that. But I don't know if that really helps me. I'm kind of slow and stupid when it comes to implementing that stuff. I watch online. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and right. really you need someone to work with to even try it yeah. out. You can only, you know, do so much of it mentally. Yeah. And don't be coming over here asking me to work. I don't want, I don't want yeah. to room, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Does yeah. anybody train with it? Let, I mean, <clears throat> let us know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if people, I mean, maybe some people purposely train with ringworm. Um, but I think people train with, with ringworm accidentally. You know what I mean? Like, they're yeah. just like, ah, we'll just see what happens. And then also like, shit, that's really weird. <laughs> so talking to my doctor, he, uh, both his kids are also trained jiu-jitsu. They go to a different gym um, locally in our area. And um, he said his kids also got it, and they got it on their face recently. Ooh. And as a doctor, right, you know, like he can get his hands on pretty much anything. So he was treating it with steroids, like uh, topical steroids, which I also have that. And that's what I was using to treat it for a few weeks, not knowing it was ringworm. Apparently, when you do that, uh, when you use ster topical steroids like that, it thins your skin. What that allows it to do is for the ringworm to get deeper in if you're using oh, steroids. So the wow. number one thing you don't want to do is use steroids on ringworm if anyone runs across that. I uh, thought I thought it would uh, make them strong like Gordon Ryan. Yeah, I mean, I was looking for, I was like, <laughs> does it have an ab yet? Something, nothing. You know, I'm about to just name the little guy. You That's know? so funny. Yeah. And it's on your legs? Yeah, just legs. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Because, yeah, you don't really ever wear shorts or anything I like don't. That. I, you know, I don't. No. Mm -mm. You even show up in your gi. I do, yeah. And I shower before class and after class, so who knows? I, mean, I just picked up some black belt ringworm in there that you can't get rid of, right? <laughs> I'm like, just die, motherfucker, but it just won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's funny. There, you know, there was a time when uh, one of our buddies, he's gotten ringworm and staff like two, three times in a row. He got it so bad he thought he gave himself staff. Like yeah. he's like he's like oh, I thought I got rid of it, but apparently I didn't. And uh, I'm like, oh man, that that's unfortunate. Dude. I haven't had to, knock on wood. I haven't gotten uh, ringworm or staph infection yet. But then again, I haven't really been training. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but what are you looking forward to going back on the mat? Hey, what's up, everyone? This episode is brought to you by Manscaped. And what a perfect time considering April is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month to help raise awareness and to fundraise for a good cause. The leaders in Below the Waist Grooming partner with Testicular Cancer Society to remind you to check your golden nuggets this month for anything not so golden. And while you're down there, shave your balls. While you save your balls, support a good cause and go to manscaped.com and use our code ETP20 to get 20% off plus free shipping. Since April is National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, I wanted to take a second to talk about men's health issues that are important to me. Did you know one guy every hour, every day is diagnosed with testicular cancer? So this is a reminder to all men listening, 
check yourselves, please. Manscaped, in addition to providing the right tools and solutions for safe and easy manscaping, has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. It makes sense, right? We use Manscaped products daily to trim and maintain that region below the waist. While you're down there cleaning up your sack, why not go ahead and give them a little investigation for lumps, changes in any size or any pain. I think we can all agree it's pretty fun playing with your balls anyway. Preach. Together, we save balls. Get it? To help remind guys to check themselves for testicular cancer, our limited time, you can get their special new edition purple TCS lawnmower 4.0 electric waterproof trimmer. This thing is amazing. Look at this thing. It's lights even purple on it too. <laughs> this special edition trimmer is a collectible item. There are only 10,000 in existence. So make sure you get yours today while supplies last. Once they're gone, they're gone. With the launch of their special edition lawnmower 4.0 purple trimmer, Manscaped will be donating $50,000 to their longtime partner, the Testicular Cancer Society, to help those impacted by testicular cancer. Get the new lawnmower 4.0 TCS special edition trimmer and help Manscaped raise awareness to give back the Testicular Cancer Society. Visit manscaped.com slash TSC to learn more about how you can check yourself while enjoying Manscaped products at home. Get 20% off and free shipping with code ETP20 at checkout. Once again, that's 20% off and free shipping with code ETP20 at manscaped.com. Make sure to spread the news and tell your buddies to check themselves in Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. Thank you, Manscaped. Uh, you know, I felt like I was getting into a bit of a routine, which is nice, right? When you get in that routine and everything's kind of flowing when you're gone. Yeah. And every time you miss a couple of weeks, it's, you know, it just sucks to go back. You know, I think right probably two, three weeks ago, I think I told you I was just getting destroyed in class yeah. in the live roles, man. Just, just hammered, uh, beat to shit. I was like, this sucks. Like that, you know, that's when you're having those real low times rolling and I mean, it was all my fault, right? I was just, you know, out of shape. And, you know, I was like, man, why am I struggling so much? Yeah. You know what that feels like a little bit, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. I was uh, going to say last week, I think it was last week is when I went to class. And I was like, I was like all right, man, I'm going to go back to class. I've been training like once a week for like two, three weeks because I've just been so busy with, you know, getting ready for my wife to leave work. I was on 12, so I couldn't really train because I was, you know, working 12-hour shifts. And then... uh and then I actually got to go to class, dude, and it was a, a rude awakening, man. I was like <laughs> hammered. It was like I, I posted like on the story after class on our Instagram. I was like, man, you know, went to class tonight finally, hundred percent the nail. And it was, dude. It was like it was like to the <laughs> point where I felt bad as a training partner because not because I was like spazzing or doing crazy things. I just felt like I wasn't able to provide value to my training partners you know what i mean like, right i was like i was like man you guys are just kicking my butt tonight like i am trying my hardest and um it's just i just feel like this like nothing is working i can't stop anyone i can't stop any moves even like the white belts were like giving me a really hard time and uh i don't know man it was it was it wasn't it, like didn't hurt my ego or you know make me frustrated or anything like that but it was just like man i just i hate taking breaks like that and then getting back to it and and just getting demolished well i don't really hate it i wouldn't say i hate it but you know it, it is a uh, it sucks when it happens yeah, it's you not enjoyable I mean? yeah yeah like uh, i mean everyone pretty much that goes to class now unless they're brand brand new like they're good enough like they're good enough to make you yeah. sweat and uh give you a workout so if, if you're lagging like good fucking luck like <laughs> Yeah, you know, especially with the people we've been trading with for years, right? They're like, no mercy, dude. Like, <laughs> like you're gonna get it. I'm know? like, I like sit there and at the beginning of the roll, and I'm like, all right, man, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a little bit easy. I'm just gonna ease back into it, and then people were like, oh, it's Travis. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it up on him. Like, Let's no, see if he's no. still strong. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's one thing I also started doing too. I started my uh, Chad Wesley Smith, the Juggernaut AI strength and conditioning for Jiu Jitsu. I started that up again, which. Uh, I'm really happy about because it feels good working out, man. Like I miss working out. We, we were just talking about it before we press record. I have a, a like a home garage or a home <laughs> home garage. That's yeah. a good place yeah. to have it though. <laughs> I have a garage gym with like a squat rack, a couple hundred pounds of weights, uh, a nice treadmill. We have a Peloton right out of frame, you know, dumbbells, kettlebells, wall balls, boxes, like um, boxes for box jumps, like a, the full get up. 
and my wife decided to start refurbishing furniture and so the garage is like just full of like antique furniture that she's trying to redo and so we, i haven't even been able to use the garage because it's just like there's just so much stuff in there and it sucks because i'm like i don't want to keep going to the gym outside of my house like i got the gym in the house so i don't have to go anywhere i could just come home throw a pair of shorts on and get after it you know what i mean or it, it work out anytime that i have like yes. an opportunity to if only buying that stuff got us in shape i'd be i'd be like <laughs> in spartica 300 right like I'd look like fantastic, but buying it just don't cut it, right? Man, yeah, no. You got to start working out more now with all your uh, yeah, with yeah. your stuff going on, man. Yeah, like you got to yeah. go for a run now or no, no, walk. No, you'd be I surprised. I, I was talking about this with um, some other like people in kind of like we've talked to, like Ben and uh, other guys that are strength and conditioning coaches, like Kieran. And one thing that I think is extremely underrated for people that want to just increase their their daily health is going on like a walk, <clears throat> like a 20, 30 minute walk is fantastic. Especially after you eat, it helps kickstart your metabolism and helps you start burning that fat. And, uh, dude, we haven't gone walk in a long time and it sucks. I'm like, I'm like, babe, we need to start walking again in the afternoons, especially when it starts getting nice out oh, here yeah. because man, it is so fun to just like be outside, have the kids walking with us and, you know, it's just it's it's good quality family time too. But that's just something. Well, you guys used to you guys usually do that during the summertime too. Actually, well, generally I'd get up in the morning before work and hit the treadmill. But our niece is living upstairs, so mm. um, that room will be free in about a week. But you know, she's been here a couple months, so that really you know I can't go up there and run it. Three thirty before work. You, you know? should get more uh, workout equipment up there, like a kettlebell or something like that too. Yeah, yeah. And what Travis is alluding to is when I was. Uh, having a tele appointment with my doctor over the ringworm he apologized because we did some blood work uh, probably eight or nine months ago but the results got sent to the wrong doctor and that guy just signed it off <laughs> so he finally looked at that blood work when he was uh, getting ready for the appointment and he was like hey man i really want to apologize but we need to talk about your cholesterol levels you're over 300 uh, you know that puts you at a high stroke risk and i've had one before and as you can see in the mirror, I don't know how big I look, but I'm not that really a big guy and I don't eat like shit. So it could be, um, you know, hereditary or whatever, but I'm gonna spend the next couple months trying to get it down before I have to go on medication, which I've, I've already told him, no, I don't want to go on any cholesterol lowering meds. Same way after the stroke, I didn't want to do blood thinners or anything like that. Didn't you do blood thinners for a little bit though? Yeah, but it was horrible while doing yeah. blood thinners and jujitsu. I mean, I look like I was in a car wreck every day. Mm -hmm. If somebody grabbed my arm or whatever, you know, I just bruised, everything was a bruise, bruising everywhere. So, you know, nobody wanted to see that me either. But uh, I'm just going to try to lower it, you know, dieting as usual and things of that nature. I'll probably not eat any meat for the next couple months. And that's a horrible thing to say. <laughs> you know, I got ribs smoking right now that the family's going to enjoy, Ooh. but I won't be touching them. But, uh, yeah, get that down and, and we'll see how it goes. Do you have you felt like a, a shift in your body that kind of would have like alluded to this or anything like that? Or Yeah, you know, I was at work. um, about a week and a half ago, and you know, I go walk on lunch, yeah, but I haven't too. done that during the winter, right? Because winter sucks here in Washington. Um, it's always raining, always cold. But generally on lunch, I'd go walk about a mile and a half, two miles just to get up away from the desk. And uh, on that walk uh, a week and a half ago, man, I, I like came down a couple flights of stairs and I got lightheaded and I started sweating. And last time I had that happen, it didn't work out too well. That's when you had the stroke. Right? Yeah. So I was like, what the hell? So, and it was weird because my body was like, felt like it was going into like shock mode. And this is going to sound stupid, but I was craving something sweet. So I like went and got a Dunkin' Donuts. Like, whore, I don't ever drink that shit, right? Slam this cold coffee. Like, it was, it was bizarre. And I went and sat in my office for like 20 minutes till I felt like I was back to normal. That's crazy. And then I went back to work. And then I get the, you know, the call this last week from the doctor with the high cholesterol. I was like, it figures. Yeah, that's unfortunate, man. Like, I, cause you know, knowing your background, it's like, oh man, I, like last thing you need is something that's going to cause another stroke <laughs> yeah, or yeah, a heart yeah. attack or yeah. something, you know, especially cause you got a stint in your heart too, didn't you? I got a, it's a plug. It was just an opening in there that allowed a, a clot to go through. So that's clogged now. So are clogged that's closed. So that shouldn't be an issue. Did your doctor give you any recommendations for dietary 
restrictions uh, or no he exercise. wanted me to go right on to the cholesterol meds uh, uh, for those that, that so crazy if you're over 300 you're two to three times more likely to have a heart attack or a stroke and if you've <sighs> already had a stroke previously then it's even higher um so i could see why they want to do that <clears> but, <throat> he's like i ain't even risking it with you yeah so the deal we made is i will do some low dose aspirin which i have bottles of it from last time and uh i'll just try to get it lower myself and retest in august what does aspirin do um it's supposed to just help i think it thins the blood a little bit mm. um so most people that have heart conditions they recommend they take a low dose aspirin every day 81 milligrams but if you research that um Fuck, sometimes Google's horrible, right? You'll Google, like, what happens if I take aspirin every day? And it'll, you know, you can find so much data. You're like, shit, I don't want to yeah. take that either. But, yeah. you know, it's just the way it is. You're like, you're like, oh, great. Now I have toe cancer. This is amazing. Yeah, Thanks, yeah. I was like, oh, what rabbit hole did I just go down? This, <laughs> this is horrible. I try not to even look at uh, Google really for anything uh, when it comes to, like, the kids or anything like that. Because it's instant, like, you know, it's it, it, the first thing it starts off is it's typically not something to be concerned about. But if X, Y, and Z, and you're like, now I'm paying more attention. Like, yeah. Jesus, man. Like, it was all my kid was doing was just eating a chip. And like, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm from the South. Like, I don't know. It's probably hereditary. and But all the men on my side of the family live well into their late 90s, hundreds. Um, I've only known one that has died in my lifetime, and I'm Damn. 45. Uh, so you know That's what I mean? Crazy. Like they've all had high blood pressure, cholesterol. Um, some have had heart surgeries, but I don't know. It's just the way it is. Well, hopefully we can get it under control. And what's the, what, what, how long are you giving yourself or how long is your doctor giving you? I'm going to retest in August. In August? Yeah. 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 So what's that? Six months? Something like that? Yeah. 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 Man. Well, if you need any help, let me know. Hey, if you guys have any suggestions at home or know a way that John can do this, like we're, we're open to any suggestions uh, as long as it's not like some some crazy trip down to yeah. australia where your body no, goes no, upside yeah, down yeah, no. i think i I'm, i think i my goal will be to like get down to like about 170 because right now i'm probably pushing 188 you know somewhere around there Damn. normally i'm 185 but ever since that shoulder surgery that weight put on and it ain't left yeah i'm uh i'm like 210 right now so i've been trying to you know i've been doing that uh intermittent fasting and whatnot and it's been helping out quite a bit but i've been kind of slacking a little bit lately from it uh just because when i get home the wife is like are you eating i was like nah it's a little too close to my fast window and then you know it's like it she's like why do i make all this food I'm same like, i'm like oh my gosh i'm sorry uh but you know it's like i've been doing that lately. i still walk on lunch even during the rain i'll go out and walk in the rain uh on my lunch because my my jacket that i wear is usually pretty good about about uh, being water resistant um and i've been doing that and then also going back to the gym lately too which is man it's like so nice to get a sweat in you know have sore muscles again and uh you know lord l and i have had like back-to-back -back kids and i had a got my bachelor's degree during the pandemic had two kids during the pandemic uh took a new position at work that's like way more busy so all this stuff has just been put on the wayside and and recently um i've been really trying to focus more on like self-care mental and physical you know spiritually uh you know being more philosophical you know i got you right. that, that daily stoic mm -hmm. book from ryan holiday i've been reading that pretty much every day journaling in and outside of jujitsu so i'm really just trying to you know get back into that groove of taking care of myself because now that you know you you know you mm -hmm. guys at home most people at home i'm sure have kids you know it's like it's a scary thought thinking of not being there for your kids because of something you did to yourself you know so um i'm like i gotta i gotta get back on it Girl, i i think the 30s is the toughest like decade that's like when most people starting to have kids, right? And yeah. That's when they're really shifting from that, the, you know, the 20s, just you. Yep, yep. To now you got to worry about a whole family and the things you do are going to impact your wife and kids, right? Yeah. So now you have to worry about, hey, man, I got to make enough money. I got to have the right, you know, take care of my bills. I can't lose my job. They got to make sure they can eat. If they need medical, I got to make sure I could provide it. Like you yeah. now have to worry about all that. And that's something you didn't have to worry about earlier, right? Right. And that doesn't get easier until you're probably 40 because now your kids are older and like yeah. all that, you know, you've got all that established. Right. So yeah, I, I, I definitely remember all that. And I remember having to find 
methods to deal with the stress, whether that be yeah. my reading or working out or, or whatever, you know, you got to find those outlets. Yeah. I try to not let the stress get to me as much as possible, uh, but I mean, we're all human. We all mm -hmm. get stressed out about things. Um, I try to play it cool and like, oh, I don't get really stressed. No, but I get stressed, yeah. you know, everyone does. And not training wasn't helping. Not working out wasn't helping. Uh, I need to focus more on my what I'm eating actually too because I feel like I'm been I've been slacking on that part too. Um but you know it's like the first step is recognizing it, you know, and then understanding what I need to do. I've been actually actually thinking about like trying to find like a, a coach or something like that to to help me out. So I think you probably know a couple. We do know a couple. <laughs> yeah, we do know a couple. Sure. But with uh you know, being in the spending part of our lives oh, right now. Oh don't even start me on that. <laughs> it's a uh, it's like man, I can't necessarily uh afford to get a coach. Right. But the price plays into it, man. Yeah. That's like I mentioned last week when when like looking for an academy, you know, price is I think that's more important than uh, the coach. You know, there's like three things I think are more important than than the coach. Uh, I don't know if you listened to the episode. I or did. Not. And yeah. fitting your lifestyle is absolutely probably the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. Finding one that's not going to break your neck for forty six million dollars is pretty Ooh. important too. <laughs> Might be too soon. Might be too soon. So, did do you, you want to give a pro, do you want to give a professional opinion on what happened in that video in that clip? I am not a professional. <laughs> I wouldn't if I were you. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I I did watch the Henner Gracie breakdown of him, you know, talking about why he said what he said, and it makes perfect sense. You know, love him or hate him, it was it was a very great video. Very, it was, it was 22 minutes of him explaining his train of thought, um, which I think he did a great job. What I my issues with the whole Henner thing, and you guys can, you know, blast me in the DMs or hate me for what I'm about to say, but. Um, I have no issue really with him, you know, charging $3,000 an hour to be an expert witness or whatever, dude, if they're going to pay you that, they're going to pay you that like, good for you for doing that. You know, if, if, if you want to make money, you go for it. What I found distasteful and maybe you guys can agree with me at this at home was when he was doing his Instagram posts about, um, everything that happened why he said what he said and why he did what he did at the end, he would always plug Gracie university. He'd be like, and at Gracie university, we do X, Y, and Z, or we don't do X, Y, and Z. And I thought that was very distasteful because I don't know, it's just like time and place. I don't think you need to be plugging your Academy after, you know, you were charging a hundred thousand dollars to be an expert witness on a uh, standard of care that the jujitsu Acad or jujitsu community doesn't necessarily agree with. Especially, you know, everyone everyone looks at jujitsu differently and does jujitsu differently, so there is no standard of care, um, per se. But what what is your whole idea on it? Welcome, everyone. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Spring has sprung, and our friends at Manscaped have the best tools for some spring cleaning. They've already helped you tidy up all the nooks and crannies of your body's basement. But this year, Manscaped can help you get the perfect presentation on that beautiful face with the new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Make sure you look your best this spring by using code ETP20 to get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit comes with a titanium-coated T-blades that are tough on the hair but smooth on the face, lead in a single-stroke efficiency that's satisfaction at one stroke at a time. I think these beard trimmer is phenomenal. They don't pull on my beard. They cut nice and smooth. It's one of the biggest game changers for my facial cleaning and, and regimen that uh, I have introduced. I absolutely love it. Yeah, I got to say, I, I love it. The, it's very precise. Yeah. I like the way I can get it as trimmed up and as clean, clean lines. I, I really enjoy that. Save 20% off and free shipping with the code ETP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code ETP20 at manscaped.com. Focus on the face and use the Beard Hedger Pro Kit for the cleanest look in the game man i don't know that was a tough one and uh i mean i think he is an expert on it and yeah he can give his expert opinion completely I, agree i have no problems with that um get I know, your money yeah right like if i could do it i would if they were like travis you're you've hosted the elbows type podcast for a couple of years we don't be actually i'm like fuck yeah let's yeah. go <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah like i don't know man it's tough jujitsu is tough right um uh, the nature of what it is is tough yeah I don't, I don't know how, I mean, I feel like if you decide you're going to do jujitsu and you get injured, 
it's tough for me. I'm going to say like, this is going to sound horrible, but like, uh, your safety always starts with you and it ends mm -hmm. with you, not someone else. Yep. So if you decide you're going to go do this, uh, I don't know, man, I feel like you've given up all that, uh, you shouldn't, you know, they sign a waiver for a reason, even yeah. if that waiver is going to work or not. But once you've agreed to go down that path and you decide to do it, like that safety is all on you, man. If you didn't feel like that was a safe role or if you feel like someone's outclassing you too much to safely roll with, then you just got to stop. Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. That's, that's a tough one. Yeah. I don't remember who said it. Um, so I'm not going to say any names. Uh because I don't want them to be associated with something if they didn't say this. But I remember one of our, our guests or one of our friends, they said, uh, if you get injured during jujitsu, it is not the your partner's fault. It's your fault. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's your partner's fault because you could have uh, said no to the role. You could have tapped earlier. You could have spoken up if you were feeling uncomfortable. You could have just stopped the role, um, which I kind of agree with. Yeah. You know, like, like you just said, like it's, you took it upon yourself to go into that situation. Um, you know, you should be more vocal or be more aware of, you know, what's going on. If you get, you know, at one point they said is like, Hey, if you get elbowed in the face from uh, a person, then why was your face in the area where it could be elbowed? Yeah. You know I mean, what, I mean? what happens like, when we're rolling and like, you know, I get hit in the, in the eye or something, right? Generally I'm apologizing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> They're like, oh, I'm sorry. I go, no, no, it's good. Like, I, you know, yeah. it's me. I shouldn't have been there. Like, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, Agreed. That happens all the time. Like, yeah. Yeah. People will, people will stop mid roll and they're like, oh my God, are you okay? I'm like, I, I, I promise I'm perfectly fine. I'll let you know if that, if it hurts yeah. to the point to where I need to stop. Yeah. But you know, if someone, if I get hurt during a roll, um, I don't know. I don't necessarily ever blame someone else like there's a moment where i'm like dang it man like yeah you're mad you know angry, but right? it's it's more of the it's more of like i can't believe i just got hurt not like i can't believe this person just hurt me you know what i mean because it's all part of it everyone yeah. gets injured i just accidentally elbowed someone the other night in, in mid roll i didn't think it was that hard of an elbow come to find out it was a pretty good elbow <laughs> but it you know it's like it's it's one of those situations where it's kind of tricky and I feel like we're in a, you and I, and most people that do podcasts or are able to talk to uh, a bunch of different people that vary opinion from yours. Uh, I feel like we have had the opportunity to really grow, like the way we look at jujitsu mm -hmm. because of it. You know, White Belt, John and Travis probably be like, no, it's their fault. Yeah, it's 100% their they, fault. They They're they rolling be, too hard. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, asshole. Right. Why are you rolling so hard with your 240 pound, six foot four ass? <laughs> so, really, no. Like, yeah. so when people are like, hey, man, uh, sh should I watch your shoulders or did it? No, I'm going to watch them. If yeah. I feel like you even get close, I'm just tapping. Like, it's done. It's over. Yeah. Like, that's a, And that's a good point, too, right? Is. Some people will say you shouldn't have to worry about someone rolling too hard because you one you sh if you know that they roll hard or if they start rolling hard you should speak up like I just mm -hmm. said and then two if you know that they roll hard you should just avoid rolling with them if you don't want to roll hard and uh, I've done it before I've definitely avoided people and not made eye contact walked over to use the bathroom get a drink of water check my phone you know and I come. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm good. Or just tell them like, no, I'm good. I'm going to sit out around. And then when they yeah. go to find someone else, you know, so. I tell them I'm going to wait till they roll three or four times. So they're gassed and then we can roll. <laughs> You're going to need to do that for the entire class when you come yeah, back. But hold on. You need to roll two more times. Then we can roll. Yeah. 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 How about you go roll with uh, Cody <laughs> and then you roll with Jack and then you roll with Will. Yeah. Uh, and then I want you to do 600 sit-ups. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And then come on over and I'll, yeah. uh, you know, you can, we, we can roll together. So, yeah. but yeah, it's a, it's one of those things where injuries suck and unless someone, I don't know, man, I think that it's, it's hard to think about a situation where you're going to get injured and, uh, and it's not necessarily your fault because I mean, and that's the thing is like during this, this neck snapping thing, man, it's such a hard thing to say, like crazy thing to say, like the dude got his neck snapped. I know. Um, you know, he also tried to Granby roll to, to get out of the the position um i've been in a position before where I, I had a lot of pressure on my neck and i have yelled my neck my neck my neck and stopped people like like get off of me but that is such a dynamic it's so crazy to watch too it's like that's such a dynamic move oh i could imagine right after that dude it must have been horrible you know i'd be like oh shit what just happened dude like, 
Dude. I'm like, holy crap, man. But, you know, hopefully we don't set a precedent of this idea of if you get injured in jujitsu, now you're going to sue the crap out of them. You know what I mean? Whether it's a broken arm. Or Historically, that has always been the case. Right. One big court case starts it and then, you know, it's the precedent has been set. Right. And then, you know, now we really have to do this whole like jujitsu standard of care. Like, oh, is this against the cultural norms of jujitsu? Or, you know, is the, did the person know that this was a high risk maneuver? Everything's high risk in jujitsu. Yeah. How's Everything it not? Is. Everything is. Yeah. Like, you got you to think about it. Like, uh, Kieran and Jordan just said this on the Talk Jitsu podcast. Kieran said, What is the purpose of a submission in jujitsu? It's either to break a limb or dislocate a limb. Or render your person unconscious, Conscious. you know, like if, if those, that is what submissions are. So yeah, there's going to be quite a bit of risk in everything that we do. And that's where the tap, the, you know, the, the respect of the tap comes in, mm -hmm. you know, because otherwise you're say, if someone does get you in a rear naked choke, they could literally kill you. They could, you know, and you know, it could happen in the middle of class and no one would even know. You just hold on a little bit, yeah. right? you know. The great Remember when you cut me off on the road the other day? Yeah, this is yeah. this is for your ex-wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no, that's rough. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so there, you have to have the respect of your training partners in that sense too. And if you know that something is more of a riskier movement, you know, there's a higher risk of a movement for injury or whatever, then maybe you shouldn't do it. You should know your audience too. Yeah, you and know? you kind of tell with partners too, right? Like if somebody's throwing a heel hook on me, like we could be rolling fast and real fluid, and then when they're going to set that in, everything slows down. Yeah, right? Everyone they, looks at each other. They, they like look, slow they slow down, and, yeah. and, you know, and then you don't take advantage of that, right? Because yeah. they're just trying to make sure they're not going to hurt you, right? Like I see that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, Craig Jones talked about this in um, one of his videos. Maybe it was an interview or one of his YouTube videos, but he talks about how, you know, in training, you shouldn't be necessarily submitting your training partners. You should get to the submission, know that it's there, and then both of you recognize it and then work from that submission. Yep. And I think that's really smart. Um, I've been doing that a couple of times where I'll lock in a submission and, you know, I'm like, okay, let's, let's I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to finish this. I'm just going to get it to a point where they know it's there and then just hold it there and see what they do and let them try to work out of it. And if they can't, then, you know, I'll just let go and we can continue on because I think it's more advantageous for your jujitsu to work from these bad positions rather than submit someone from these positions, like get it there let them know that yeah i would submit you right now and then let them work from there i mean that's great for like a last minute arm bar escape last minute like rear naked choke escape or um darce you know all these things it, i think there's a lot of value in that yeah and i've also found it helps to just let go sometimes if you're rolling with newer people they don't realize let like you go. have it and they keep fighting it like i'll be like damn this is, is this guy like I've had one guy like pass out before and then I let it go and he came, go? he came right back. Right. It was trying to, he came right back and he kept rolling. I was like, he didn't even know he just passed out. <laughs> you know, sometimes just let him go. Just let it go. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good point too. I definitely have done that. Um, caught, caught someone in a Dars and just let it, you know, it's like slowly loosen my grip up and let him work <laughs> yeah, out of it or yeah. a triangle or something like that. Or, you know, I've even like kind of coached someone how to escape, um, oh, uh, so they were almost got you. So you went into coaching mode. No, no, I, I almost got right, there. Right, right, like, right. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh, let me tell you something. Let me yeah, tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what is your going to be your main goal when you come back? I don't know. Just just getting back into a normal routine. Um, right now, I'm honestly, I'm just having fun with it. I don't have any pressure or anything. Isn't that such classes. a game changer when you start having fun? Yeah. So it's you, like mm, all you I'm want not is worried about fun. it. Like, you know, it's no problem. Yeah, I have a question for you guys at home. And this is kind of pertaining to, and I'll love you, obviously love to get your opinion on it too, John. Uh, once again, Craig Jones kind of talked about it. You know, when he rolls with people, he just makes it fun and jokes around and, and doesn't give them the opportunity to, you know, say, oh man, I like whoop Craig Jones, but like he makes it completely unserious the second he can when they start rolling. My question to you guys at home is if you're rolling with someone and you're like, you know, singing along with the music. And I'm saying this because I was doing it the other night and it made me think like, oh, am I disrespecting my training partners by doing this? Are you like, 
when you're rolling with someone, are you singing along with music, you know, kind of like dancing, having fun, you know, making it, you know, very playful and stuff like that? Do you find that disrespectful if someone's doing that to you? Or is it all fair and game? Like, it's just, it's, you know, what's your opinion? Because I feel like it can go mm. either way. I don't get offended. I, honestly, I'm, I might be like, great, they're distracted. Maybe I can get <laughs> something there. I don't get offended at all. Like, I, I, you know, I just have... I just have fun with it, I guess. I don't I don't ever really take it, I guess, that serious when I'm rolling. Like it's not yeah. it's not life or death. Like I you know, competing that's a different story. Because yeah. you can feel the life or death as soon as they say go. <laughs> uh but yeah, I don't I don't find it offensive. Yeah, and that's the you know the reason I say that is because, you know, some people might see it as like them not trying. Like I don't want the, my training partners to be like Oh, great. Travis isn't really going to try. He's just going to joke around and sing the music with the class and, or with the radio and and laugh and smile and mm -hmm. whatnot. Like, I, I want a hard role. I want I want him to like, you know, that's that was my kind of like my mindset behind right after class. Like, oh, should I be doing that or not? Do you guys do it at home? Let us know. Shoot us a DM and maybe I'll post it on the, the story uh, and get some get some answers on our Instagram. So because, you know, sometimes. Sometimes people have different mindsets of what's acceptable and what's not, you know, uh, like at our academy for a while, you had to turn your back when you tied your belt. Uh, they don't, no one gives two shits about that now, so but stupid. I still do like, it now. No. Like, yeah, but then you're missing what's going on on the, on the mat. Yeah, right? I can hear it. Yeah, I, I need to see it. Like I said, I'm slow. I need as much. I need to see it, hear it, yeah. <laughs> try it out. Yeah. yeah. And that is another great question is what do you guys at home feel are, um, kind of cultural norms in jujitsu that if you don't do they're kind of disrespectful you know what i mean like uh obviously talking when the instructor's talking coaching when you're not supposed to stuff like that but what are other things that you guys see in your academy that you're like oh that's kind of against the norms of jujitsu you shouldn't be doing that I, I would love to hear what you guys have to say at home so i'll give you my opinion is uh the most fun i've had at a gym or was the the least formal one i went to there was no bowing in onto the mats. Uh, there was no bowing out at the end of class. <laughs> but, I mean, it wasn't like people were jackasses. Like, they got there when the class was supposed to start, um, and everyone just naturally got to their spot on the mat, and then the instructor came up, you know, and he taught the class. Then uh, you had to roll five, six, seven rolls at the end of class, and then you left. There mm. was, you know, that way, I mean, like, you could continue rolling, but normally it was five or six and they'd call the class and then you can continue. How long were the classes? About an hour. Mm. Yeah. But, uh, I actually liked it. Like it was fine. There was no, uh, I mean, I guess, you know, if you're really traditional, you may want the bowing in and all that. And maybe you grew up with it or yeah, maybe you were in karate and you're used to it. Like, I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> the only thing I find weird is sometimes you have to buy a gi when you go to a new school. And that's, I find that really weird. Yeah. To yeah. join, you have to buy a gi. Yeah, I'm like uh, Gracie before. Baja. <laughs> they, they, you literally can't do anything unless it's in their gi. Even their rash guard. Yeah, it's a little weird. So you're going to pay 150 bucks to join the gym, and now they're going to charge you 150 bucks for a uh, um, yeah, a cheesy gi. A uh, cheesy gi. <laughs> that you could have got on Amazon for 60 It's going to be 150 That's funny. So yeah, yeah. But, hey, that was a good... Good little catch up, Jonathan. Now that you're back, mm -hmm. it's weird doing episodes without you. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, well, well. Soon you'll have to do it. Uh, say again? No. Yeah, who wants to hear? Uh, Luckily, uh, final I'm, question at home. Who wants to hear a solo I'm, episode from Jonathan? You don't. I'm so old. I don't even know how to set this stuff up. That, that's what I'll have it over here, <laughs> ready to go for you. Oh, yeah, right. Even if I'm out of town. Uh huh. I'm like, I'm like, babe. I'm gonna. I'm I gonna know your calendar. I'll make sure I'm out of town at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know if you guys want to hear a solo episode from Jonathan. Yeah. I, look, listen, side note, real quick. There are people at home that find you very philosophical mm -hmm. and think you're very intelligent. And John's been offered to do other podcasts by himself without me. And I do not take offense to it because I think Jonathan provides a lot of value mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. And he says no every single time because he is scared. I'm not scared. He's scared. No, no he's I'm just a quiet scared. person. No, he's scared. No. He doesn't. He doesn't want to voice his opinion about things. He doesn't want to. I have the greatest conversations in my own head, and he's afraid <laughs> to talk to other people with that. 
<laughs> so if you guys want to interview Jonathan, mm -hmm. uh, please just hit him up on Instagram and or Facebook, and he will 100% do your podcast for you. We can discuss books. I really yeah, like books. Yeah. On a podcast. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, remember, guys, we have merch now. I don't have any merch in here. I kind of dropped the bag on that. But if you guys want elbowstight.com, you can buy some merch from us now. Go subscribe to our YouTube page if you haven't already. Five star review wherever you listen to this at. Check out our sponsors down below. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. John, you got anything else? No, nah, man. That's it. I'm not saying it. Did you know, nothing else. Nothing else. Mm mm. It's awkward. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to Watch It at Home. Remember, no oil checks here. Peace. All right, guys. Peace.